Good day, everyone. Today, we'll be discussing all about fire hazards. Since we cannot meet once again for that particular topic, so I'll be just giving you this video presentation so that at least you'll be able to gain some further understanding and we can have one understanding all about this topic. So I will not make it too long. We'll just make it simple and short. So we have here the ozone disk of fire. It is considered as one of the worst nightclub fires in the world. It happened on March 18, 1996, leaving at least 162 people dead. This is considered as a disaster. Knowing that disaster came from hazard, let us recognize what fire hazard is. So this is our lesson six. Fire hazard, overall, it's over a concept. We have fire composes of or it composed of fuel, heat, oxygen, chemical reaction. We have also fire undergoes ignition, growth, full development, and decay. Thirdly, it requires rays past stop, draw, and, and roll, so as edit. Later on, we'll be discussing each one of them so that we can have deeper understanding. Let us start first with composition. There's what he called fire triangle. It is a diagram or illustration that shows three components that make up the fire. Without this, these three components, fire is impossible to happen or occur. We have fuel to burn, oxygen to add in combustion, combustion or heat to raise the fuel to its ignition point. So we have three fuel, not just LPG, not just the gasoline that you're thinking, but even um, we can consider even those flammable materials such as paper, wood, um, clothing that can um, intensify fire fuel. So that's fuel. We have oxygen and heat. So these are the components in order for fire to happen or to become possible. After fire triangle, or several studies and researches, um, there's another component that they add to the fire triangle, making this fire tetrahedron. So fire triangle formulate, was formulated first before fire tetrahedron. So the fourth component added to the three is what he called chemical reaction. It is stated, according to fire tetrahedron, that in order for fire to occur, the four must be present. Chemical reaction, I mean chemical reaction, oxygen, heat, and fuel. So what is fire? Okay, basically, fire is a process that involves the rapid oxidation of objects that, I mean, objects at elevated temperature which produces smoke, heat, and light. You will be able to know that there is fire once we can observe smoke, heat, and light, right? Those three are the evidences that fire is already happening. Fire is already occurring. The, there are terms that we observed earlier, oxidation and elevated temperature. Oxidation is reaction to oxygen by oxygen by objects. Then we have also elevated temperature, high temperature, hot, hot temperature. So that, that characterizes fire. What are the causes of fire? We have three, carelessness and accidents, electrical equipment, smoking or lighting of fire material. Let's go first to the carelessness and accidents. So frying pan left unattended is considered as carelessness and accident an accident, and it can cause fire. Engine ignition due to prolonged exposure to heat. Overheating of appliances, it can cause fire. Candles left unattended, very obvious. And improper use of propane or LPG-powered stoves, such as butane-powered portable stoves. They are supposed to be used only outdoors, not inside. So be responsible in using... Um, portable stoves that are powered by butane. So these are some of 
um, the causes of fire under carelessness and accidents. We have also electrical equipment such as octopus connection or wiring. So it can cause also fire. Then we have concealed wirings. When we say concealed wirings, they're covered and cannot be easily monitored because they are um, mount, mounted, mounted in our walls. So they're covered and once they're beaten or cut by pests or animals, we cannot easily, um, we will not be aware or will not be able to notice it easily that there's something wrong already with our wirings. So those are under electrical equipment. We have smoking or lighting of fire material. Children that are left attended with matches and candles that can also cause fire. We have also fireworks, firecrackers, fire lanterns. Once they're being caught by light materials of your house or houses that are made up of or made out of light materials that can cause fire. Stages of fire. There are four stages of fire. We have ignition, incipient and growth phase, and we have fully developed phase and decay phase. Let us know each one of them. Ignition phase is the first stage. So it is when that uh, we can still put out the fire using fire extinguisher. The three components of the fire, triangle, oxygen, heat, and fuel join together in a sustained chemical reaction. This phase is usually the first minute of fire. And it, they can be put out, the fire can be put out using fire extinguisher. You must be quick in putting it out so that it will not um, proceed or go to the second stage, which is the growth phase or incipient phase. There's already convection. The house or the room will be much warmer or hotter. And the flame or fire reaches already the ceiling. Hot gases that are collected at the ceiling transfer heat, allowing all fuels in the room to come close to their ignition at the same time. Or this is kindling temperature at the same time. So this is the second stage. And I think it's very hard right now for you to put out the fire. And this is the right time for you to call help from others and to contact emergency personnel such as firemen and your 911. Full developed phase or free burning phase, this is already uncontrollable. Before this happens, you must be able to escape already or go out from your house. Convection rises already and your house is very hot and there is less chance that you can survive in this stage if you are still here, in, if you are still there inside. These heated gases spread out sideways from top and downward or top downward, which forces the cooler air to go to the lower levels of your room. During this time, if you're still at home or you're still inside your, your room or house <clears throat> while escaping, you must, you must crawl down or crawl low in escaping. Do not walk straight because oxygen is present um, below the smoke or close to the ground. Since warm air rises, um, cool air um, set us at the bottom and oxygen is present there. Make it sure that you can escape very quick because it is not just you that will consume oxygen. Even fire will do so. So be quick in escaping before the oxygen will be consumed out. We have decay phase or burnout. So this is less intense than the fully developed phase. It becomes um, less intense compared to the fully developed one that is uncontrollable. But take note, there's what they call ember. Ember in our term that is baga or baga, right? Baga. 
that is um, very important for you to know because before you escape from your house, there's a need for you to close all the doors, contain the embers, contain the fire. Because once fire consumed up all the oxygen inside the room, it will put out. Since there, um, there's already lacking out of the components that make fire. So close all the openings. However, during the time that your house is already at the decay stage, the fire of your house is already at the decay stage, and you open the door, the fire again has the access to oxygen, and it will react once again to it. Fire reactivates, and that's what we call backdraft. And that can be explosive, very dangerous. So before you will get inside a particular room or house, ask first the fire personnel if it's safe already to get inside. Because aside from embers, there are also debris, right, that can fall. And it might hurt you, can cause injuries. Remember this term, backdraft. This is when fire reactivates because it has, again, access to oxygen and it can react once again to it. So that is what we call backdraft. It is much explosive than during um, full developed stage. So those are the stages of fire. We have in seed what do you call this one? Ignition, then incipient growth, then full develop, lastly decay. Classes of fire. We should know the classes of fire in order for you to know the um, exact fire extinguisher that can put out that fire. Classes of fire is, I mean, are classified according to their fuel. Remember what I told you, fuel or flammable materials aside from LPG and the, the gasoline. So we have class A, the fuel of fire that is class A are ordinary combustibles, wood, paper, cloth. We have also class B, flammable liquids, grease, oil, paint, solvents. Class C, live electrical equipments such as electrical panel, motor, wiring, etc. We have D, combustible metals, such as magnesium, aluminum. And lastly, K, commercial cooking equipment, cooking oils, animal fats, vegetable oils. So those are the classes of fire. They're being classified according to their fuel. And the common fire extinguishers can only put out fire under class A, B, and C. If it's already D or K, you should look for a special type of fire extinguisher. Let's go right now to fire safety measure before a fire. There's a need for you to know the fire code of the Philippines of 2008 or the R Republic Act or RA9514 safety standards set for fire. So this is the law that sets safety standards for fire. Let us know those standards. These are things that are needed to be placed in a particular building. We have fire hose cabinets, the fire extinguishers. They must be accessible. They must be seen easily or be found easily by anyone so that we can, they can use it in times of fire. And the fire extinguishers must not be far from each other. We have also the emergency light the sprinkler system and the smoke detector. We have also the fire exit and the fire exit must not utilize doorknobs. They must use panic bars and it must be opened by pushing, not pulling because there is a study that once a person is in panic, he or she cannot think properly. And um, the first thing that he or she will do is just pushing anything in order for him or her to escape easily. So that exit door must be pushed. It must be opened by pushing. We have also fire-rated materials such as doors or dividers so that your doors and dividers will not be 
will not catch fire easily and it can protect yourself if you want to stay there for a while during fire or in order for your room to be protected from um, a room that is already on fire. So use those fire rated materials. Next one we have, we should know the location of tools and fire exits beforehand and knowing emergency numbers of your local fire brigade. Awareness of the surrounding. If you smell leaking gas, search for the source and shut it off immediately or ask someone who knows how to shut. And there's what we call as brush wipe or sponge test. If you want to know if your LPG tank has leaking, so just spray uh, bubbly soap onto the tank and if there is if there are bubbles, tense bubbles, or there is exhausted air or gas coming from your tank, that um, is a sign that there is leaking on your tank. We have also inspect wires. In order for you to know if it's already beaten or cut by pests or by accidents, because it can also cause fire, right? Number two, before fire, edith. What is edith? Exit drills in the house. You must know. I mean, you must prepare an exit plan at home. Not just This is not just required or recommended for buildings, but also at home, especially for children and elderly. They must know where to go out and the meeting place. They must know the meeting place so that you can also, we can also prevent further losses. Conduct drills at home and put um, the exit plans. Those persons who are staying at the second floor and first floor, there must be exit routes where to exit properly during fire or even earthquakes. And during fire, there's what they call carbon monoxide poisoning. What are the... Um, what are the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning? We have headaches, um, somewhat like dizziness, um, vomiting, nausea, breathlessness, collapse, loss of consciousness. Most people are not being killed by flames or direct exposure to fire during fire disaster. Instead, um, it is caused by carbon monoxide poisoning. What is carbon monoxide? It is a compound that mimics the properties of oxygen. When we say mimics, it seems like it has the same properties with oxygen that our body might think that it is oxygen and we will, or it will, um, we will inhale that particular gas compound, gaseous compound. And it is tasteless, odorless, colorless, and it is very hard to detect. That's why during growth phase or full develop phase as much as possible. Escape very quick because you don't know that there's already carbon monoxide that can poison you. Once it enters your brain, once you inhale that carbon monoxide, you can feel these symptoms. And once you will lose your consciousness, you will lose also your chance to escape from fire leading to death. So be guided. You have race, R-A-C-E. Rescue, alarm, contain, extinguish. So you will do this one as, uh, as long as you can, especially in the ignition phase or incipient phase. Rescue anyone as long as you can. Alarm anyone in order for them to, to, to become aware of what is happening in the surrounding. We have C, contain the fire, close all the openings before you go out, before you stay away from your house or get outside the room if that is the origin of the fire so that once the fuel and the oxygen are already consumed up by the fire, it cannot have access to oxygen and fuel more, right? We have extinguish, use fire extinguisher. How to use fire extinguisher? I have here a fire extinguisher. So pass, P-A, 
SS. Pool. Okay, there's a pin over here. I don't know. Okay. There you go. There is a pin here. Okay. You pull this one because you cannot squeeze this part of the fire extinguisher if um, this will not be removed. So pull this pin. And after that, you aim. You aim to fire this nozzle. You aim this one to fire directly. Then squeeze this. Okay, I think you cannot see it properly. Okay, you squeeze this one. And once you will squeeze this part of the fire extinguisher, this nozzle or this fire extinguisher will produce powder or foam. Then sweep, sweep it from side to side to um, seek you, to um, make it sure that fire will really be put out. So that's pass. That's how to use fire extinguisher. So and what's last? What's the last? Okay, we have stop, roll, and roll. If your t-shirt or your pants catches fire, what you should do is that you 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 should stop drop on the ground and roll so that you can put out the fire on your shirt or pants. I think we're done already. Sorry. I hope you have learned something from our discussion today. If you have questions, just send me your questions on LMS or on Messenger. Thank you very much. God bless in your summative best. <laughs>